The next methodological question is, uh, should the groups who develop and sell the program also do the studies? Um, characteristics of early colorectal neoplasia might be a next topic for AI, but uh, at the moment uh, we have to live with um, human intelligence. And the first question when you, when you deal with this issue is, uh, what is early neoplasia? Because we are seeing fundamental definitions, uh, definition differences between East and West. And then the question, what are the clinical challenges? Because at least in the West, and I think in, in most parts of the world, EMR is still standard for benign lesions. So you could think about how to improve EMR. And at the moment, the current discussion is a case selection for ESD or FTDR or even surgery. So that's the current standard. But you know, if you change the parameters in this game, the challenges for imaging and diagnostics also become different. So here is this eternal discussion between East and, uh, East and West that there is mucosal cancer in the colon and um, um, the WHO definitions are a little bit changing again, but basically I think if we're talking about uh, clinically relevant colorectal cancer, it's submucosally invasive cancer with the abbreviation SMIC. So um, why is this important? High grade, you can oncologically resect piecemeal. Probably you have some recurrence rate which in some studies goes up to 40%, but in other trials with margin coagulation, as in a recent randomized trial from Australia, goes down to 5%. So here we have a range. If you're dealing with uh, cancer in a, in a strict way, uh, from an oncological standpoint, there has to be en bloc resection, very likely so, charging from surgery and, and other data, and the recurrence rate, if it's well done, is theoretically very low. But there is a narrow window, because if the cancer invades more, the current guidelines tell you you have to do surgery for oncologic reasons because the risk of lymph nodes is higher. So this is the narrow window for ESD. And, and uh, again, keep in mind, what do we have to find out for diagnostics? Unless there is, you know, a huge campaign by companies and, and also some, uh, some very dedicated endoscopists saying, okay, let's do everything which is uh, above two centimeters with ESD. If that should become the reality, and it's, it can really be doubted and debated, but that, that's not the topic here, then, you know, this is the diagnostic block. So you don't have to care about whether it's cancer or not. Uh, the only distinction then is to recognize uh, patients who should undergo surgery. But again, you can say, well, uh, in that case, um, if we are wrong, we have a step up, so we go to surgery. So you see the, the diagnostic requirements um, change according to uh, the clinical management uh, protocol. We also have to bear in mind that uh, the rate of curative resections, and that's the last uh, remark for, for therapy, is, is rather narrow. So on block resection for colorectal lesions, and they are usually put all together, is, is greatly variable. It can be 90%, but as low as 30%. Plus the subgroup of where ESD is a curative treatment is also variable. So the window gets narrower and narrower. And it's, it's not always difficult to uh, diagnose those lesions. So what would be the diagnosis here? That's a flat colonic lesion, with slight central depression. Of course, you can say I need a closer look in the vessels and this and that. Um, in fact, I spent about, uh, fortunately, the patient was an, under general anesthesia because of another lesion. I spent about, uh, I think, 60 minutes with, with that doing ESD, and it was low-grade adenoma. So this reminds me of the discussion which came from the Far East and say about the flat polyps. And we learned that the flat polyps per se do not have a higher potential of malignancy, but it's the central depression, which is the problem, which we also had 
on the, on the previous image. And there are different uh, uh, ways to categorize lesions with regards to their malignant potential. And the most popular is, you know, you have this uh, term LST, laterally spreading tumors, to make a differentiation between the granular type and the non-granular type. Um, it's a little bit subjective, so if you uh, are an uh, ESD aficionado, you will detect a lot of granular, non-granular, oh, this looks dangerous, and so, et cetera, et cetera. If you want to do EMR, you will uh, have um, a tendency to stage it uh, as a granular type. And here are various studies from West and East showing, of course, there is a higher risk in the non-granular type, and there's also a mixed type, et cetera, to make it more confusing. The risk is, is not 70 or 80 percent. It's significantly higher, but it's around maybe 15 to 20 percent. And in other studies, um, there are always few cancers, and five of them were classified granular. So are other classifications better? That's the, uh, the Japanese classifications, um, which you can see here by the Japan NBI expert team, as you can see. And it's um, according to vessel pattern. So we have four um, categories. And uh, this, is, uh, this is a study. And, and here we have the same problem as Dr. Mori told. These are usually these human studies, not artificial intelligence, but it's the same. They are very artificial. They take superb images, and they show it to a group of experts, and the expectation level of the experts, they know there could be cancer. So everybody is very alert, and usually um, the, the diagnostic accuracy is much better as compared when you do uh, dozens of colonoscopies and in every 150 colonoscopy there might be a lesion and your attention level is, is not as high. So it's a huge difference between those imaging studies, very focused, somebody selected the image and a study out there in real life, but actually the latter one is uh, the most relevant one. And here you see um, the correlations between the groups. So type 1 is hyperplastic and adenoma, high grade. And this is our SMIC, not very many cases uh, overall, if you can, as you can see. And the correlation is so-so. So even in a carefully selected uh, imaging study with uh, super experts, it's not so good. And out there, this is real life. It doesn't seem to work at present. Um, well, you can say these are not experts and all idiots, and if you go to the super expert, he will recognize. But the super expert is not working in that setting. So he doesn't do hundreds and hundreds of, uh, of colonoscopies. And uh, this is a very good real life study because, you know, Dutch people, they, they have a very systematic approach, so they have introduced their FIT program and their, their colonoscopy, and there was really a training of the colonoscopies to recognize cancer. And of 3,600, that's real life, colonoscopies, 92 cancers finally were detected, the correct diagnosis in 39%. And similarly to in, in the real world in Australia, in, in this other study, you know, there are many publications on this study, large adenomas, um, sorry, that's wrong, uh, 1,765 patients, not 7,000. Uh, the rate of SMIC was 8%, and the low risk uh, less than half, but the correct diagnosis only a third of cases. So if you mix it with real life benign polyps all the time, it's not very good. And even in the land of the imaging high priests, in Japan, it doesn't seem to be so easy because this is a very interesting study. It's in the esophagus, and the main focus of the study was completely different. So it was dealing with uh, squamous cell cancer, um, which is high risk, so it's not low risk. It cannot be treated by endoscopy alone. And they had various groups treated by ESD plus radio chemotherapy. So the focus of this study was different, but there uh, was a very interesting uh, side effect you can see from that study. There were 176 high-risk cancers, so recognized by super experts as, on the basis of imaging, be high risk. And then you see what's the outcome, the correct diagnosis in only half of the cases. So the difference is between 30 and 50%, so this does not seem to work 
in real life when you are not biased and you know very focused, look at the images and know what you should see. Um, and it's a small problem. So that's the, the uh, German colonoscopy database with a lot of adenomas over many years. And these are the rates of high grades and cancers. And of course, it's size dependent. So maybe the only practical thing is to take the size and uh, above a certain size limit, then some experts or centers have uh, to deal. So the practical approach could be who is going to do polypectomy. Um, larger than one centimeter, I think most people do it, larger than two centimeters. Um, so you have to train people for gross suspicion and then probably in uh, above a certain size, and that would be the easiest criterion, send them to a center. But it's a small minority problem, and you also have to bear in mind it's not the end of the world, so if you resect a cancer, and that's incomplete, there are salvage solutions, even with an endoscopy. And also, surgery above the rectum is not a disaster. So it's not, you know, you can say, okay, we, we failed here, but the patient is not lost, and there are enough data that uh, prior endoscopic therapy, which leads to subsequent surgery, the prognosis of those patients does not seem to be, although these are not randomized trials, worse than if the patient was treated primarily. I'm sure that artificial intelligence will be the solution for all these problems, but I'm also very skeptically that it will be in the first run because it's like a rat race and uh, so the companies or, or groups want to develop systems and uh, bring it on the market. And in this complex issue, probably the training has to be very accurate. So if we have this big lesion and this is low grade, this is high grade and this is cancer, it's probably not enough to have one picture and saying all is cancer. So you would have to correlate very precisely the, the location where the image comes from and the histology, which is not always done. So if you take your image repository from uh, five years ago, there is no clear-cut correlation. Um, and of course, it's not always the super image. So if artificial intelligence cannot deal with normal images, then it's difficult unless the system tells you, come closer, come closer, take, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So that's a, a long way to go. But the most interesting aspect for me is we are pretending that from a superficial flat image, we can conclude to a transverse image of histopathology. And I'm very skeptical that at least the human mind can do that, and I've shown you uh, images from real world that this is not possible. But if adequately trained, artificial intelligence to start with will find out, because if if you have a very good system and it's trained on adequate images, a gold standard is, is good, and it's still not working, then it may mean that it's, uh, this question has to be answered negatively. Okay, thank you very much.